Hello, welcome back to another episode of Explosions and Polymers. Polymers are fantastic and really useful, like this plastic bottle, that's a polymer, and this foam, that, that's a polymer, is an arm and a polymer. Most polymers aren't crystalline materials, and that makes them physically different. And a lot of these properties are very useful when you think about them in the context of explosives. Normal crystals are, well, I mean, they're hard and brittle. If you heat them up to a certain point, they melt, all right? Everyone knows that. But if you have like a shell or something that you want to fill full of explosives, your only two options are either putting in the solid material, smashing it down, and smashing all the crystals in there and then compressing it or melting the solid and then pouring the molten explosive into the shell and then letting it cool. Obviously, neither of them are the perfect solution. Polymers have a property called their glass transition temperature. Below this threshold, they're a brittle solid, but above that, they're a soft, malleable solid. So really, this is ideal for something like filling a shell because you could set the glass transition temperature to be below room temperature, so you're dealing with a soft, malleable explosive the whole time, so filling a shell would be really easy. Or you could set the glass transition temperature to be slightly above room temperature, so you heat it up a little bit, it goes all soft, you can like easily mash it into your shell, and then it cools down and you feel with the hard brittle explosive inside your shell so I mean polymers have this advantage but really there's hardly any explosive polymers currently in use or even in development it's not even a really an area of research explosive polymers there's two reasons for that but before we get to the reason let's make one it's the most simple polymer explosive that's ever been made is polyvinyl nitrate and we're going to make it by nitrating polyvinyl alcohol polyvinyl alcohol I'll call PVA here the PVA is a hard basically non-flammable solid that's actually really hard I couldn't grind it in my mortar and pestle at all I had to buy a coffee grinder it was just so hard so I take it all back polymers are trash and I don't like them at all all right so we've got powdered PVA the other ingredient we need is concentrated nitric acid so I distilled some from sulfuric acid and a nitrate salt and then because we really need it really concentrated for this reaction I believe I redistilled it over sulfuric acid uh, so there's a very easy test to see if your red fuming nitric acid is concentrated enough and that is whether it sets your lab gloves on fire. So we can see uh, there's no hesitation with this acid to set my gloves on fire so um, a little bit more hesitantly we shall push forward and we're going to be keeping this reaction basically at zero for um, the additions and we're going to be adding some sulfuric acid for this run because that's kind of a standard nitration procedure is to have concentrated nitric acid possibly not this concentrated but concentrated nitric acid and some sulfuric acid however the problem seems to be that the sulfuric acid forces the polyvinyl alcohol or the polyvinyl nitrate to precipitate out so we get these big lumps of polymer that don't really nitrate well and form really inhomogeneous mixtures. So it's, it's not really ideal and it, it, these big lumps have all this acid absorbed in them and it's really hard to get all this acid out of them. It takes ages to neutralize these big spongy masses. However, we can see this glass transition temperature really easily because at room temperature it's, it's really hard solid but the glass transition temperature is probably around 50 or 60 degrees so in boiling water it gets all soft and flexible and you can stretch it. You can really see this really dramatic change in physical properties. It's not melting. Nothing changes on a molecular level in terms of the chemistry but it's just how much energy that whole matrix kind of have for all the different strands to move around in. It burns pretty well but because we had that precipitation out into the reaction mix I reckon we can do better. Throw the sulfuric acid out the fucking window and we need a different dehydrating agent. One that won't precipitate out our mixture. That is phosphorus pentoxide. We're stepping it up a notch here. This is fine as long as our cooling bath is up to the bloody task because it gets a little wild. And then we slowly add our ground polyvinyl alcohol. We can see this reaction has run a lot better because we actually end up with a basically clear solution. There's no lumps of polymer precipitated out. Even though it is all polymer, it's actually all dissolved into the big nitration bath so um, that's really good and it will allow it to be nitrated properly and this means it generates a nice uniform powder when we precipitate it out into water which looks really cool honestly
This batch, it does burn better than the last batch. Still, there's a lot of carbon left over. It is oxygen balance negative, so there should be a little bit of carbon left over, but it still seems a lot for how many groups should be on the actual polymer. So we really need to nitrate it more so we can do better. So the only way of doing that that I thought of was to run our product through a whole nother nitration. We get a polyvinyl nitrate, we get a new nitration mix, more phosphorus penoxide. We run it through the whole ordeal again we precipitate it out and we get an even more uniform product that burns, I mean, slightly better. So I feel this is the best we're going to get, really. It's not that bad, but uh, it's, it's really the best we're going to get. At this point, we can start using its polymer properties. So we can fill a syringe full of it, put it under hot water, and it'll basically all mold together and we can extrude it out of that syringe. This will form quite dense little, like, nuggets, I suppose, of the energetic compound and that will burn even better than the loose powder will. Well, I mean, kind of. Because there's still a lot of residual carbon, I thought maybe we could get a really good boost out of putting some oxidizer in there. So I soaked the polymer in a potassium nitrate solution in the hope that it would kind of like impregnate the polymer with oxidizer. I mean, it improved it, but at, you've got to reach a point where, you know, even a ground almond will burn if you put enough potassium nitrate in there, you know. It's kind of cheating, really. All right, so that, that polymer, that wasn't so bad. I mean, maybe you're expecting me to say all oh, polymer explosives were trash, but that really wasn't too bad. So what are the reasons why no one does any more research on explosive polymers? The first reason is because we already have one explosive polymer and you cannot compete with it. It's fucking the chad of the explosive polymer. What that doesn't, chad of the explosive polymer world, that doesn't make any sense. And that is nitrocellulose. So nitrocellulose is based off the polymer cellulose, obviously, and it's been used for like the past century and is very hard to replace because it's such a well-established polymer. It has a very fast burn rate, so it's quite popular here on YouTube. There's a lot of videos of people making nitrocellulose and burning it. However, I gotta say, it does get a bit of an unfair advantage because most people nitrate something really fluffy and of course that's gonna burn really fast anyway because it has, you know, such a low mass and a large volume. So even though nitrocellulose burns fast, it's really enhanced by the fact that you, you're start burning something really fluffy. So what you can do is dissolve it down in some acetone and then uh, re-precipitate it out and kind of make something out of it. And you see then when it's all such a dense structure, it doesn't burn nearly as fast. It still burns quite well, but it doesn't burn nearly as fast as a light fluffy material does. So you can't, you just can't compete with it. And that's because of the same reason all explosives do well. And that is of course, raw power. Now it doesn't have anything fucking to do with like how good it is, it's just cost. Cellulose doesn't just grow on trees, trees grow on cellulose. So it's much easier to just fucking nitrate a tree than to make some specialist petroleum product polymer and try and nitrate that. You're just gonna fucking grind down the tree. It's just so much cheaper. Nitrocellulose, so hard to compete with. Yeah, okay, so I'm kind of shitting all over nitrocellulose, but doesn't it also have that glass transition temperature property? I mean, it is a polymer, so technically it should have that. Well, it does, but it's also like 160 degrees, and if you heat nitrocellulose to 160 degrees, it's virtually at its auto ignition temperature, so it tends to do this. No fucking polymer magic for you. The other reason explosive polymers aren't really a thing is because, well, I mean, we don't need them. <laughs> <laughs> While I've spent this whole video trying to sell you on the idea, we have explosives so good that you can mix them with a plasticizer, make them the consistency of Play-Doh, without their solids actually being a polymer themselves. They have all the physical properties of the plasticizer that you put them into. Semtex and C4 and that sort of thing, so they're moldable, but the explosive that's giving it all its power is actually not a polymer itself. So it's kind of cheating, which is a little bit of a shame, but it works, so, I mean, you can hardly complain about it that much. This is not really plastic explosives. This is Play-Doh. Oh, no. That's my reaction mix. Oh, I can't believe I've done that. Oh, that'll fuck everything over. <sighs> fuck. Um, where was I? Yes, polymer explosives are a waste of time. Really, the future is in energetic plasticizers. Ideally, you could have a, a solid that would both be a good plasticizer to make it all, you know, play doughy, but also adds to the explosion. That's an area of research, I suppose, but it probably won't be an explosive polymer.
This has been Explosive Polymers. I have a Patreon and you can support me thanks to everyone who supported me on there. I've managed to get an oxygen cylinder in that corner of the room because of it. I think the next goal is a liquid nitrogen dewer. I hope this video has been a good lesson on why you shouldn't just throw things at a wall in your lab while you have open reaction vessels just out of the camera's vision so that you don't look like a complete slob. Um.